What's up everyone and welcome to Weird Westeros, where I go over weird histories, lures, and theories from A Song of Ice and Fire. Just because the show is over doesn't mean we can't still talk Game of Thrones. Today, we're going to talk about the five weirdest sentient species in Planeteros. The Children of the Forest are the original inhabitants of the continent of Westeros and are a mysterious, non-human race. They are mysterious because no one has seen them since the Andal invasion 6,000 years before the War of the Five Kings. Most Westerosi believe the children are just a myth and never existed, but there are some who believe they did exist, they just went extinct many years ago. People like Maester Lewin and Ned Stark. As we have come to find, the children indeed have lived on through the centuries, living beyond the wall, serving the three-eyed raven. They resemble humans in shape but stand smaller, making them no larger than human children. Their skin is pale gray-green with a rough texture close to the appearance of plants, and their eyes are also a bright green color. They worship nature gods, the old gods of the forest, and legend has it the children carved faces into the sacred werewood trees. They are not technologically advanced, but they are skilled in woodcraft and are knowledgeable in plants and animals. Known only by legend, many Westerosi believe the Deep Ones are extinct, however, believing they thrived during the Dawn Age. The Deep Ones are another non-human, intelligent race described as a dark, vile race of half-men, half-fish living in the oceans. They have been known by many names, squishers, merlings, mermaids, selkies, and walrusmen. Many say they were controlled by demonic gods and ancient beings residing in the darkest corners of the forest. If you've heard the stories of legend, Deep Ones have done many things and can be found almost everywhere, giving birth to the Ironborn, having something to do with the mysterious fused black stone Hightower is built upon, warring with the Maze Makers, mating with Toad Islanders, Thousand Islanders, and Sistermen, and also being controlled by the Old Ones living underneath Lang. If they aren't extinct in current day Planeteros, they are likely lurking in the Shivering Sea, Sunset Sea, and other Eastern Seas. George R. R. Martin has layered many Lovecraftian characters and tropes into A Song of Ice and Fire. Saying this is nothing new and the old ones are a great example of it. Underneath Lang's jungles and forests lies a vast array of labyrinths and tunnels made by a civilization long gone and forgotten. It is believed the Old Ones are gods that live beneath the labyrinth cities. Before Lang was conquered by the Golden Empire of Yi Ti, it was ruled by their Empress of Lang. She was known to be able to commune with the Old One and received instructions she was expected to carry out. For example, it is said that four times she was instructed by the Old Ones to kill all strangers on the island. However, once Jarhar, the sixth Sea Green Emperor of Yi Ti, conquered Lang, these slaughters immediately stopped. Jarhar also sent a number of exploration parties to explore these labyrinths. All who traveled below returned mad or not at all. He eventually made it forbidden to travel underground and sealed the tunnels. They have remained this way since. And something that I've mentioned in my previous video of this mini-series, some also speculate that the Old Ones in fact control Deep Ones, commanding them to wreak havoc on land. The Ethiquevrin are also woodswalkers, a banished race that once lived in northern Essos among the dense forests. Ethiquevrin is a name given to them by the Dothraki, meaning those who walk in the woods. These woodswalkers are described by many as small and gentle folk. Their description resembles the children of the forest, so many maesters believe they are kin to the children. According to the Ebenese, the Ifaquevrin would bless the homes that left offerings to them, even though no one has claimed to actually have seen one. When the Ebenese expanded their lands to the south of Ib, many believe Ifaquevrin killed off during this conquest, while others say they went into hiding. Though no Ifaquevrin can be found in present-day Planeteros, they did leave a settlement called Vais Lace, or City of Ghosts, in Dothraki. Claiming to have visited the kingdom of Ifaquevrin, Corlys Valerian wrote of carved trees, haunted grottoes, and strange silences. They go by many names. 
wide walkers, cold gods, and white shadows, but in the books they are first introduced to us as the others. They are a species of humanoid beings that live beyond the wall, and it has been believed them to be extinct because no one has seen them for more than 8,000 years. They are described as looking tall, gaunt with pale skin, cold blue eyes, and pale blue blood. George R. R. Martin describes them as strange and beautiful, something like a different sort of life, inhuman, elegant, dangerous. Some characters in the books and many characters in the show say they are dead, but George R. R. Martin has insisted that they are not. They wield crystal blue swords that, when clashed with steel blades, create a high, thin sound similar to a screaming animal in pain. Bring the blades close to flames and the blades screech. We are told that these swords are made of ice, but not normal ice, so it's speculated the others wield magic that can manipulate ice into shapes. The others are also capable of resurrecting dead humans and creatures, otherwise known as whites. The only way to prevent bodies from resurrecting is to burn them. The others are accompanied by extreme cold, though it's unclear whether or not they are the direct cause of it. It is however likely since they do appear to be able to manipulate the weather, for example causing snowstorms or mists concealing their presence. Old Nan tells us in the books that the others hate every creature with hot blood in its veins. Melisandre, a priestess of Rulor, believes the others are the children of the Great Other, an evil god of cold darkness and death, who wages eternal war against Rulor. I spend some time talking about this in my video covering Rulor. The others were first defeated during the Battle for the Dawn in the Age of Heroes, and it couldn't have been possible without the help from the First Men, Children of the Forest, and the last hero, Azor Ahai. This channel is a passion project of mine. I created it because I love Game of Thrones and I wanted to improve my communication skills through YouTube and filmmaking. With that said, if you have any feedback on how I might be able to improve my videos, I really appreciate it. I've learned so much since I've started on my journey and for those of you who have been watching since the beginning, you know how much my videos have changed. I'm dedicated to making high quality material and I'm working to improve with every video that I upload. So my fellow viewers, there. If you have any feedback, I'm all ears. I really appreciate it and thank you so much.